In 1665, Isaac Newton took a needle and stuck it into his eye. Now, he didn't do this because he was bored. He did this as part of an experiment to try and work out how we see color. As it turns out, he would have been much better off if he wanted to find out how we see color to take the needle and stick it into the back of our brain. <laughs> However, Isaac wasn't to know this, because at that time, the brain was just this mysterious organ that sat on top of our heads and did something. It was only 200 years later that people established that the nerve cell or neuron was the basic building block of the brain. So what do we know now about the brain? Well, as far as individual cells, we know quite a bit. We know that if we take an individual nerve cell and we take a needle, much like Isaac Newton's, and we stick it in to record, by giving different stimuli and looking at the output that we get, we can identify the basic rules of behavior that a, neuron ha that a nerve cell has, how it reacts. But the brain isn't just a couple of neurons, it's a lot of neurons that are connected to each other and to form some large, complex, living network. So the next step is to take, is to take two nerve cells and to take two needles, stick it in, and record simultaneously. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. Ah, this neuroscience, it's simple. What we do is we keep on taking needles and we keep on putting it on our brain and we add more and more and eventually we'll understand the brain even though we'll be looking like big hedgehogs. <laughs> However, there are two tiny, tiny problems with this approach. The first is, it's impossible. The human brain has been estimated to have 100 billion nerve cells. That's nearly as many stars as there are in the Milky Way in our galaxy. So we have a problem of scale, of size. We also have a problem of looking like hedgehogs. <laughs> the second problem that we have is that even if we could record from every single neuron or a nerve cell, what could that tell us? We have so much data, but that doesn't mean that we under necessarily understand how that relates to the brain. So instead, a better way of doing it is to try and take what we know from these networks and to try and work out how they are ruled and how they are governed instead. Now, luckily, we live in the age of computers. And computers are a really nice tool for trying to attack this exact problem. So what we can do is we can go back to our original uh, individual nerve cell, and we can take the rules that we know from it, and we can put it, reduce it into a mathematical formula. And by putting this mathematical formula into a computer, we can start to build a network from our virtual nerve cells. And by comparing the output from our ne virtual network, we can compare it to what we see in the real brain. And this should give us a good estimation of how good our guess is to what's really going on in the brain. Now, of course, there are lots of problems with this, with this approach, but we're getting closer, and we can now understand how epilepsy works. So. so Although it's a, the, the understanding the entire brain is far off, we're getting closer, and we will soon get to the point where we can understand how the brain is the first system to understand how itself works. Thank you very much. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs>